Thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name is Brian. And I'm Ethan. And we have Benny with us today. Little Benedict. He's hanging out on my lap today, so we'll see how that works out. Should probably put a picture of him so that I yeah, don't so think it's just a random dude here. Yeah, just some dude Benedict is hanging out on my lap. Uh, no, Benny is a, is an English bulldog, all of uh, maybe four months old now. And uh, he is, uh, it is a handful, but he very much likes chewing on cords, so uh, we're just letting him hang out here for a little bit. So uh, it's been a while since Ethan and I have done like a full battle report, so we ended up getting a chance to get connected now since I'm kind of unpacked a little bit enough to the point where we can record and play games and everything. And uh, to kick it off, um, I ended up playing a list that uh, uh, one of the people who, they when I started selling uh, Big Top Gaming Dice, they were the first ones to pick up the War Machine set. And this would be Jesse. He uh, is... is takes part on a, in a channel called Alpha Strike on YouTube, and they do battle reports very similar to the way that we do ours right now. Um, but uh, they're a very uh, beginning uh, a channel. So uh, he wanted me to play the Signar list. So I think we've we've played we've played Haley two several times on the channel now. As I much mean, as you, I, well, I mean, like we kind of tried to play her a couple times because one time I think our game got deleted, and then another time the game that I played in Stevens Point got deleted. So I think she should have been on the channel four times. So this might be her second or third time on for I real. I think it's third. Yeah, that wouldn't uh, wouldn't shock me. So uh, this list is in Storm Division, and it's going to have a uh, Haley two with a Squire Thorn and Ironclad making up her battle group. And then we also have uh, Nemo 4 running around with his mechanics and a hammersmith. Then we've got a journeyman warcaster sitting with a Minuteman. Then uh, Sir Dreyfus the Storm Knight is in the list, along with Savio Montero Acosta. And then to round out the list, we've got Anastasia de Bray, a Stormsmith Stormcaller, a full unit of Storm Lances, and then two Stormsmith Storm Towers. So there's a whole lot of interesting stuff in this list. It definitely plays into uh, the way the meta, I think, is shaking out now, but we can definitely go more into that uh, later on. But that's kind of the list that we're working with today, and this was a special request by Jesse of Alpha Strike, the YouTube channel where they do battle reports for War Machine as well. Alpha Strike. Alpha Strike. So this week, I'm playing Kruger 2 in Secret Masters. Uh, I had a few lists prepared, and then Brian's like, you know what, I want to play Haley 2. Try and bring something that can give her a good match. And I was like... That Grail and Horgle 2 list I made sure doesn't stand up. So I was like, you know what? I've got a Kruger 2 list. It's not in Bones, so it's not as good as it would normally be in the Storm Division with basically army-wide electric immunity. So I have a lot of minions and a lot of Riot Quest solos, so like they don't get Kruger's bubble. So I thought it'd be kind of an interesting game to show off what Haley can still do, and especially into, like Brian said, like she's still poised to be well in the meta, and this is definitely... Kruger 2 and Secret Masters is a meta list you would see if you're seeing Circle these days just with uh, the power solos I have in the list. So the battle group is double Wold Warden with one Wold Weird. I got a Well. I got Kogan. Hulk Kogan, Hulk the Exile. Hogan. Scythe, Chuck Dogwood, Hermit, double Death Archon, double Stone Shapers, Gudrun the Wasted, one River Raider, a Boil Master and Spear Cauldron, a Gobber's Crew, and then Malvin and Mayhem. So just a bunch of solos and power stuff that I can TK around and kind of just leverage my feet, TK, and kind of the threat ranges. Yeah, you don't really care too much about friendly faction when TK just does whatever you want. The electric immunity would be nice. Like, Kogan becomes friendly faction, so, like... But otherwise, like, there's not a lot of friendly faction buffs in this list mm -hmm. besides the sheltering hand. Ooh. I don't think I've ever heard you cast that spell. It's just his aura. Sheltering oh, hand gotcha. is just the, the nine inch bubble. Immune. Yeah. Gotcha. So Haley too very much likes to go first, which is one of the big reasons why you will typically see her with Anastasia Debray. And I did win that role to go first. Uh, Ethan ended up having some issues trying to figure out how he wanted to place his well, and gave me the side with the trench, which you wouldn't think is really a good place for Haley to kind of be. You wouldn't want to give that to Haley, I guess, is what I'm saying. But uh, given the way that the obstruction and the forest were settled up. Uh, Ethan didn't have really a whole lot of great choices for where that uh, well was going to be positioned. So um, my deployment's kind of sitting with Nemo and uh, his battle group more towards the, the far side of the table. I know that he's probably going to be hunting Malvin and Mayhem. 
So that's kind of why he's settled up there. I've got uh, the buddy cop duo of Savio and uh, Sir Dreyfus kind of sitting up there with him. Haley's kind of sitting towards the middle with her ironclad, and then Thorn's way off towards the bottom with the storm lances, along with the uh, journeyman warcaster and the Minuteman kind of hitting up in the middle behind that obstruction. You can kind of see how I've positioned things to uh, um, kind of make sense of, like, you know, the Minuteman's going to be sitting here behind this obstruction to make sure that Ethan can't just take it out right away, because I do value those POW-14 slug guns, especially going into things like Death Archons or any other kind of super solos out there. I think he does a good job hunting those down. So a lot of what's going on right now is just trying to figure out the math of what I'm going to be doing with Haley's Focus, and since I've got turn one, and there's not really a whole lot of opportunity for me to try and crack out a turn one domination, uh, I'm just using all of her focus to just TK things around and get them further up the table uh, to kind of exert that pressure against Ethan. So I think what ends up getting TK'd was uh, Nemo, the Hammersmith, the Ironclad, uh, um, Thorn, and then maybe... You basically TK your battle group and Nemo. Yeah, that's what I that's what I was getting at. You know, I think that's the the run of what I got here. So um, also the uh, I have to chuckle because I don't have any uh, Stormsmith Storm Towers. Uh, so I ended up proxying them with the Dragon's Breath rockets because they they need to see the the table sometime because God knows they won't see that for a while now considering the Vindicator exists. But um, now that's a whole other discussion. Yeah, another a whole another discussion. Uh, I ended up having, when I was at a Noble Knight on Friday, we ended up getting into a small tift over uh, whether the Manicore or the Vindicator was the best non-character Warjack in the game, and I'm pretty sure I handily won that one. But uh, it's the Vindicator, by the way, just going to say it. Uh, that's debatable, but It is debatable, on. right? But. Like, that's a debate. Like That's a 10-minute <laughs> ramble after the game, not your turn one that's just taken forever. Exactly. So I haven't played Haley 2 in a good long time, and she, she is a... A technical caster so like you don't want to just kind of run 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 turn one especially when you're playing against someone like Kruger who can really reach out and touch someone so I want to try and be a little bit more conservative with what I'm doing here and that big old hill that's on the bottom of the screen is actually quicksand which and, is also why I didn't take that side yeah another big reason why Ethan didn't take it so my uh, my journeyman war caster is kind of hanging out right in the middle of this uh, um, in this quicksand uh, I did put Arcane Shield up on the Storm Lances, but I forgot that the Journeyman starts with three focus instead of four, so that's why he's got two on him right now. So yeah, I lost the roll into Haley, which is a sad time, but I got to see where Thorn was kind of going, so Thorn went really wide down towards the bottom. So that's why Melvin and Mayhem, you can't see him, but Gudrun's behind the house and one of the Death Archons is up there because I'm hoping I can leverage Melvin and Mayhem putting up Roadblock with the Death Archon behind it and then with Gudrun, so now the Death Archon is deaf. Just casual 20 against shooting in, Mel or shooting in Magic thanks to cover and the plus two bubble. And now here I'm measuring out, like, can I get to Thorn cheekily? Because, like, uh, he's measured for my personal threats but it's always hard to factor in well what if the well summons a tree within three and then that tree places five inches forward i always forget about that speaking of summoning nemo summoned a uh, storm blade captain on turn one yes so like i'm debating in my head like because i kind of want to get rebuke out early on the unit of storm lances because they're up they're in the middle that'll kind of gum them up and there i'm checking 12 inches away because thanks to sock puppet dogwood uh, he can craft Talisman to make Rebuke 12 inches. So I'm like, well, I don't need the tree because I can just walk up, throw out a Rebuke, and then save my summoning for next turn. Because I was also debating, like, oh, if I summon a tree, I can go for Double Gallows on his Journeyman to maybe kill it, but it's Camp in 2, which it should have been 1, but I was like, eh. I'd rather go for Rebuke, play it safe, Stormwall, or put Windstorm up and kind of take the Slug Guns out of the equation. I miss the six, and I'm like, okay, I'll do it again. I miss the six, so I go for rebuke for a third time and finally hit it. So now I'm sitting on one. And I was like, that's great. Yeah, was, that was not the greatest way to start out your turn with uh, with Kruger whiffing almost three rebukes or two rebukes. Yeah, he hit the six exactly on the third one. So I was like, okay, if I can go for the unboosted rebuke, get a six, 
there I'm trying to drift an AoE onto the dude but miss, and I still summon a tree just for next turn to try and contest the flag, maybe score it. But I figured with Kruger, I go for an unboosted rebuke that leaves me with five. I put up storm windstorm. So now that's down the two, and I can either TK myself back in camp zero and be kind of safe. Uh, but now I'm just camping one. So weird runs up, just riles. I'm going to TK Kruger back to be a little bit safe with one of the wardens, which is immediately going to trample through the objective. And that one did deploy enough close enough. We did both take dugout. Yeah, we both decided to do dugout so we couldn't push each other around. Yep. So that way, because dugout does stop you from TKing yourself, so. I knew I couldn't TK my World Warden this turn, but now he can't fish it out. Uh, so just kind of moving up that bottom side. Unfortunately, without Windstorm up, I do got to worry about that Minutemen coming in and shooting the Death Archon. Because normally with Windstorm up, the Minutemen can't shoot, which is really good for me. Uh, the Pop walked up, did its corpses, immediately gave three to Hulk Kogan. And Kogan's just kind of running up behind the woods. I'm staying far enough forward where he can't TK me into the woods. That's like, I'm just kind of, we're using a laser checking line of sight stuff. And the casual walk jump threat of a TK temporal accelerated Dreyfus, cause I've taken that to the face before. So I figured stay outside of range of the woods, just so that way I can threaten it for next turn and kind of moving my solos up. The, the unfortunate part of going second against uh, Haley two with Nemo four is that top Jack threatens seven inches extra out of movement activations before factoring in TKing me or dominating me. So like Haley and Thorn can't reach anything up on that top side because Thorn's so down on the bottom. But I know that Jack can still move seven whole inches and then charge. So I'm trying to tuck Melvin and Mayhem over, but I can't keep him out of TK range of the woods. So I opt to try and opt to that side and hope that Haley can't get all the way around. Or can't get the heavy all the way around and would clip the woods to teleport. Death Archon kind of walks up to base the building. And then Gudrun is getting up within three inches of Melvin and Mayhem and the Death Archon. I know he has the Storm Tower over there, so I'd really hope to run to the wall turn one for cover. But if I did that, I'm in trivial heavy threat. And then he just takes the heavy. Or he takes Melvin and Mayhem with his souped up heavy. All right, so this is where, like, the, of course, all War Machine games start, right? But for Haley 2 and myself, who uh, doesn't play Haley 2 all that often, um, this is where a lot of thinking and uh, figuring out kind of starts to happen. Um, I have a lot, of, a lot of options here, and the first one is figuring out how I want to allocate all of my focus here. Um, I guess the very first decision is ambushing Anastasia to Bray. Whether that I, I did that right or not, I, I always blend my control and maintenance phase, so I, she comes down when she comes down, and then I just kind of thread the needle from there. So I'm trying to figure out who it is that I need to allocate to or what I want to do, because given that Haley 2 has such an immense capability to threat so many things in uh, with between Thorn and Nemo 4 hanging around, um, you really have to think about what it is you want to execute this turn. And for me, I really would like to try and get Malvin and Mayhem off the table because they're such a pain in the butt to deal with. Now, I do have the two Stormsmith uh, Storm Towers, which will effectively shut him down for the most part. But he can still do some work without focus, just not as much as, you know, as I think he would like. So I decide to start doing the calculations on what does it look like if my Hammersmith gets locomotion and temporal acceleration and TK. Um, to be able to get into Malvin and Mayhem. Am I able to get on that Death Archon as well? And after measuring it out, I'm able to make those things happen. And uh, I'm like, okay, well, that's going to be the plan here. So uh, I at first was like, I'm going to load up this Hammersmith. And I was like, well, herp derp, we've got the, the Nemo's little uh, band of merry men there who can empower him. So we're not going to do any of that. I don't do anything with the Ironclad or Thorn. Um, I do believe the Minuteman gets a big old stack of focus because I think I'm going to walk him around the, the rock and then jump into that uh, Death Archon on the bottom of the screen. Um, unfortunately, Anastasia Debray gets the charge in on the uh, Gallows Grove and doesn't kill it um, because she doesn't get the backstrike bonus since you have circular vision. Yes, and then that Storm Duder hit it with a POW-10 and didn't kill it. Yeah, because he does get to ignore stealth, and I think we left it on one box after that, which is, you know, it basically it might as well have all of them because it's still an arc node. 
Um, it doesn't lose any of that. So this is me bringing up my uh, my Minuteman. We're just walking and then spending one focus to jump, and that puts me into engagement with the Death Archon. And with Gunfighter, uh, I'm able to start shooting at it since I'm engaged with him. So I boost the hits, and then I'm like, ah, do I, I have two focus left. And I don't decide to boost the damage because it's just going to be dice off three. Um, and I'd rather boost the hit on the second slug gun. And we leave that Death Archon on six boxes. So I'm pretty happy with what that Minuteman's already done in this game. Uh, with just being able to kind of chip down the, uh, the, the Death Archon a little bit. Because the sooner those go down, the better. It's just one less thing I have to deal with. Um, not that the Death Archon really does a whole lot into my army. It does quite a bit in terms of dealing with those Storm Lances. But, uh, you know, I really, uh, I'm not, I'm, it's not like I'm running two full units of single wound infantry or anything like that. And even on the Storm Lances, with the unyielding bonus now in Arcane Shield, it's dice minus seven. Yeah, so it's like, pretty harsh. It's not going to kill. It might double stationary them, though. So with my Storm Lances rebuked, I uh, sat there and farted around a little bit because I didn't realize that the Desperate Pace didn't work on them, which it makes sense and it shouldn't. But, um,. It only works on the Storm Guard and Storm other dudes. It's just small base guys. So the Storm Lances are only able to get one. I'm only able to get one on the Death Archon. Um, so I ended up slapping him and didn't really do anything to him. You, I I you punched him. the weird. Oh, the weird. Yeah, because I was like, I don't think I'll be able to do much to that Death Archon sitting there at a, you know, there was. Oh, no, I was I was a, 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 a fraction of an inch out of being able to get on the Death Archon. And that's why I slapped the weird. So uh, at this point, I think uh, I'm just trying to figure out where Haley and friends need to go. So we end up doing the locomotion or TK. I think we're doing Nemo right now just because I wanted to try and make sure I could get that Stormsmith Storm Tower in range to be able to shoot Malvin and Mayhem. And this is where I need to like get really tricky with things where like I need to have Nemo get out of the way so I can TK or move over with Haley and TK the Stormsmith gun tower so that I can aim and not have to worry too much about the force barrier from Gudrun. You know, that way I can kind of negate it a little bit. Um, it's more of like a assurance thing that I don't have to deal with Malvin and Mayhem. So I do connect and he is disrupted and that's the big reason why we need to do this because they just have auto disrupt on their gun. And we do a decent amount of damage to Malvin and Mayhem too. I think it was like six points or something like that. I mean, Nemo just shot and crit knocked him down. So that oh, was yeah, fun. Oh yeah, that was another one too. Yeah. So I guess the Stormsmith Storm Tower hasn't gone then because that was Nemo's crit shooting that did that. And then Haley moves over, does the TKs that she needs to. And then I realized that I just have like totally done everything backwards. So Ethan was kind enough to let me roll some things back and get those uh uh get his band of merry merry bros to uh empower uh the the hammersmith you know nemo should have gotten the signs importance first but um you know it is what it is i just kind of didn't thread the needle right or do my activations properly there so uh i end up getting Haley to tk the stormsmith gun tower up and then i aim to rat eight and take my shot over at Malvin and Mayhem. I hit easy peasy, so he's disrupted, and they do some damage to him. Yeah, Melvin's down to basically two thirds health just from Nemo shooting in a storm tower. Yep, and then unfortunately, given the way that my Hammersmith got loaded out, he's only got two focus on him right now with temporal acceleration. So uh, I end up activating him to go charge into Malvin and Mayhem and make sure that I'm able to position things in a way to where uh, I'm able to still maintain uh, engagement with the Death Archon. So we take the shot into Malvin and Mayhem, and I believe this one gets hermited. If no. I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay, so that'll be later. So you don't hermit this one, and we do a ch big old chunk of damage. And after my first two initials, we end up boxing him. So there's no crit smites, out, or not crit smite, but a chain attack smite coming out of this one. So next, I end up boosting a attack roll into the Death Archon. And uh, the damage roll was uh, was very not happy. So we leave the Death Archon on eight boxes. And if I would have had an extra focus here, I could have maybe boosted that damage roll and done some work. Or maybe gone a little bit more uh, spicy with the... Um, well, no, I would have boosted the damage roll because you're getting cover for in, in melee too. So uh, just not super hot for the Hammersmith. At least we got Malvin and Mayhem out of there. And now that Death Archon is just kind of choking on a heavy... So next up, I'm just doing some small moves, and I am able to draw a bead onto the uh, the Hermit. And I figure while I'm here, I might as well just kind of take a point off of him since I've got nothing much else to do with this gun. So I do have to kind of jigger the, the Stormsmith gun tower around a little bit just to make sure it can get its line of sight. And we do hit and uh, pop some damage on him, and then after uh, E-leaps, 
nothing really big happens there. I think uh, we just e leaped into the uh, objective. And yeah, the objective eight went into leaps, then it went into these, the pot, and then I think that was it. Well, and notably this turn, considering where Haley ended up, uh, trying to feet was not going to get me very much. So I opted not to feet, even though I got top of turn, which is usually like the, the flow for her is like, go up turn one, do stuff, turn two, do more stuff, feet, and then screw your opponent's army. Yeah. So like I was at least appreciating that I can do stuff. Losing Melvin and Mayhem was sad, but like there's no stopping Nemo's heavy from not taking my heavy. Like I'd have to be so far back because like, you just trivially were almost in walk punch range when the thing activated. Yeah. But you wanted distance to get to the Death Archon. And so, like, uh, this is going to be a long turn for me because, like, I need to do work. And, like, if I don't, she's going to feat, and then I'm just screwed. So, like, I need to start scoring points. I need to kill Anastasia. I need to get my Gallows Grove onto the flag, which means I have to kill that stupid Storm guy. And I have to kill the Minutemen to try and get some blocks and then I got to plan out what's going to try and kill his heavies so the weird just shot the storm lights I engaged it killed it boosted boosted damage killed shot the next one boosted damage killed and then shooting I believe the third shot here is going over there yeah, I think that one came up a little short hit dice minus eight with the additional die from purgation did a couple points uh, so the weird did its worth I just wanted to try and clear a lane for the Death Archon, because I knew like Death Archon would be good, would be decent into the Storm Lances, but it's, I'm not realistically hurting them. I might do one or two points with Annihilator, but then hopefully stationary you and then just kind of gum you up. But then I'm worried about Thorn and Haley just spelling down the Death Archons because then I'd no longer be engaged. So I wanted to try and kill as many as I could and then bury the Death Archon and hopefully use that to contest this turn. And then I still got to deal with the Hammersmith that's up on the top. And here we had to look up if the pot could give corpses through a building or if it had to target the model it wants to give corpses to. But the the special delivery thing just says pick. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, so you don't need line of sight to choose a target. Yep. So World Warden goes over, boosted TK, Magic 7, needing a boosted... I think it was an 8 or something like that because you're I'm 12. 15 engaged. Yeah, you're 15 engaged. I need a boost at 8 thanks to Dogwood. Hits the TK, TKs him around, and I TK him in a way where Kogan can still charge and still smite him into the wall. That way I don't have to worry about smiting him out. I, I puppet master him with uh, Dogwood, and then I slam him. I only slam him 2 inches, which is half down to 1 because they... On the rules forum, they said that Kogan's thing will be changing. I don't think it's updated in War Room yet to smiting larger bases half distance. So I didn't smite him into the wall. The charge roll was really bad, so I pop a mastered it. And then from the second attack onward, every attack was auto pinballing him into the wall. So I was just getting boosted POW 16, boosted POW 16. I think I killed him with a corpse to spare. Yeah, uh, you killed him down to your last corpse, and oh, it yep. was to the very box. Oh, yep, 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 that's right. So, like, Hulk Hogan can do work. Yeah, as a, he, he, he is definitely a, the business. If you can line up a heavy and just keep smiting it into a wall repeatedly, it's just such a good time. And then here, I believe I'm doing Scythe. Scythe walked up and was just shooting. Shot a lance that was down to one box and then kind of just windfalled through. Oh, uh, you kind of whiffed on the rest of them. I think I shot the Storm Tower to and then went down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just kept daisy changing through doing a point or two. But I'm... Unfortunately, my grunt wasn't close enough for take up. Yep. Uh, the tree ported forward, and then the well boosted the shot into Anastasia. Hit, killed, gave the corpse all the way across the table to Hulk Hogan up there. And that's where he gets his one corpse. Yep. And now I'm just trying to, like, okay, there was that shot. Measuring the death archon. Like, do I want him to get TK'd? And this is where it gets a little complicated for me because I'm like, I want to TK him to dig him deeper. That way I could place him into the zone and maybe catch that captain over there because he's another power like 14 weapon master that I don't want to deal with. Or is he a weapon master? Yeah, he's a weapon master with quick work too. The, so he gets to charge, fight, and then shoot. Yeah, I don't want that. It's all about removing the pieces that can do work on Haley's feet turns, so that way they don't get basically two activations because I can't do anything on my turn with proper positioning. 
so now I believe yep Kruger threw a gallows into the dude killed it so I'm like okay I just need a warden to uh, kill that Minutemen and then I'll be scoring that flag and life is good uh, but first Kruger is t TKing the duder yeah, the, the Death Archon. Yep, the Death Archon, because he couldn't catch the captain. He was, like, just out on the captain uh, without TK, but now, like, as you can see, if he gets up in the biz with a three-inch melee, he can kind of hit everything he wants. Yep, even his positioning will be fine when he turns to face that uh, that, that uh, s the storm lands. Yep. So I was full on corpses, uh, so I popped Annihilator, and the place ability. Flicker. Flicker. So I killed my charge target. I want to say. Once we get through here with Annihilator. And I killed the captain. Yeah, but you... Or you, no, I only I only killed the captain. Yep, yeah, but you missed you missed the first... the One of the Storm Lances and then failed to box the second one. So now you're going in and I think uh, you've... Uh, so the, the one that's... Um, the one that's on the top, or the more... The one closer to the obstruction was the one you hit first but left on a box, and then you missed the one that I just removed. Then when you made your second attack, you you hit the one that was by the rock, or you no you. No, I hit way, them. I hit them both the you, first time. Something something missed to where you could not do your chain your chain attack. Uh, I missed the second swing on the one storm lance that's still alive, but I got to, I got a corpse from the captain, which let me do flicker again. Mm -hmm. Or is that only once per turn? That might be once per turn, now that I'm thinking about it. You cheat, bastard. Hey, you've cheated against me plenty of times. Anyways, uh, I think you also... It's also yeah, worth it's noting, once per activation. It's also worth noting that you left Rebuke up on that unit, and I think at this point you were lamenting keeping it on because you were like, oh, I could have used that extra fury. Yeah, because Kruger is sitting on nothing? One or two. I think he's at sitting... One. Mm, at this point, because he did the gallows. I didn't boost it. Yeah, maybe sitting on one. So here, yeah, because you were like, I could sit on one and just raw dog the gallows. Let's do that, yeah. So the weird or the wold warden behind the wold weird tried to TK a boosted or boosted TK into the Minutemen to bring him forward so I could walk and punch him. I missed. So at that point, I was like, Do I die to a Minuteman? But then I believe we checked yeah, here we and you're to, out of control because I this is still in a world where I think that the journeyman is focus four. So I was like, oh yeah, 16 inches is easy peasy, but then it was, uh, you know, not going to happen. So this is a really great part that we can't miss. Oh, fuck. Uh, the, the Death Archon charged into uh, Dreyfus and Savio. You hit Dreyfus, didn't really do any damage to him because he's armed bazillion. Then you missed Savio. By he, one. He dodged, and I was like, I could dodge out of melee and just exist, but I'm going to dodge into you, and I'm going to punch you with repost. So I did that and just ripped him off the table. Yep, that was a fun time. So I missed it by one with Annihilator needing an eight and then died to a repost. So that side is basically dead to me now. So going into turn three for me, uh, Ethan ended up scoring one in his zone and contesting me on mine and contesting all the other flags. So uh, I'm also contesting his, so it's just one to zero right now. And uh, I lost one heavy, and I lost some, lost a whole bunch of storm lances. So like now I'm at the point where like I need to really figure out what I want the rest of my army to be doing. I need to start taking pieces from Ethan. Taking uh, a Death Archon out of activation was amazing because that means that's one less thing that Savio needs to go do, and he can go ahead and deal with deal with uh, Gudrun before he starts getting into my army and causing a real bunch of heartache. So on that, uh, I'm trying to figure out the math of what Haley needs to do right now, and uh, this is just all focus allocation business. I was thinking maybe Thorn goes up and is the one to deal with the Death Archon, but then I'm like, I need to make sure that I have TK and a fully loaded Ironclad with Temporal Acceleration going on, and with the math on that, uh, there, there isn't really a way to make sure that the, that or that puts Thorn into a position where uh, he can do what he needs to do. Because I also need to TK the um, the Wold Warden that's hanging out, um, you know, closer to the bottom. I'd like to try and get into one of those to try and take it off the table. So uh, I don't put anything onto Thorn. Fully load that Ironclad, and I'm like, you know what, Ethan? I think last turn dropped Rebuke. No, off I of, kept Oh, it. it's still still hanging around. So Mortal Fear is up on that Death Archon in the middle here, and I'm like, well. 
I'm just going to have to go for it and see if the Storm Lance can take him off. I've got two attacks between the mount and the, and the lance, and we'll see if we can do it. So he ends up connecting right away in the butt first, and then does enough damage to just rip him off the table with the lance. So that's a really big deal for me. That was an activation that I basically thought was worthless to me, and ended up making it... Uh, or putting it into a place where it could take out the Death Archon, which was huge, huge, huge. Next up, I move up the Journeyman Warcaster, and I shoot the uh, Gallows Grove off of that flag, so now Ethan's got no chance of scoring it, and I'm poised to be able to take that flag next turn with the Journeyman. Next up, we get up uh, Thorn into the Wold Warden into TK range so that Haley can do what she needs to do. She kicks the Squire, of course. And I think I end up moving the Squire around a little bit just to make sure that I can get Haley into a place where her feet's going to be really, really effective. Um, so I think now, though, instead of dealing with the Thorn stuff, I want to see if Haley needs to commit herself to the upper side of the table at all. Um, and maybe I'm just doing some measurements here to see what Haley is actually going to grab with her feet once I get there. But I believe, you know, given that I played this game two hours ago or an hour ago, yeah, I go over to the other side here, and I'm having Dreyfus kind of clear off some things. I want to have him get rid of the Swamp Gobber River Raider. So he ends up hitting that with the flank bonus that he gets from Savio and uh, and takes it off the table, so that's no longer contesting. Now Savio walks over the wall and just casually rips uh, uh, Gudrun off the table, easy peasy, with his POW 15 Weapon Master shots. Uh, doesn't even need to charge to get over that wall because he's speed flipping six. So now we're going to go ahead and get a little spicy with Nemo. Um, I was thinking th about getting a little more spicy with him. I was like, you know, I could just charge Kogan and put a bunch of POW-12s into him and then, like, really leverage Nemo's, uh, uh, you know, table presence and try and make that work. Uh, Benny wants all up in my face right now. But, um, you know, Ethan talks me out of it, and I start shooting Kogan instead. He hermits the first shot. I do not. God damn it. So he doesn't hermit the first shot, because he knows I just have a second one. And uh, Kogan does not tough. That's the microphone, Benny. So Kogan doesn't tough, and then uh, we move along to, uh, I think what we're doing now is some damage to uh, uh, something. I'm sorry, I had a dog all up in my face. Um... This is just the, the storm grunt that's running around just to kind of be annoying, I guess, or maybe he'll do something later. So the the squire moves up to make sure that Haley's still got it, and uh, we go ahead and uh, we we uh, do all the TKs that we need to do. So I hit my uh, ironclad easy peasy, and I only need ones to hit Ethan's world warden, which is easy with the uh, the reroll from the squire, and then. Uh, I go ahead and execute the charge that I need to with the ironclad to get him in there. And, uh, you know, I, I was like, oh, wait, slow down. I, I have to feet real quick. So I feet, <clears throat> and I roll a, a six on on her feet roll. So now I'm, I'm uh, kind of feeding on eight models. Not kind of, I just am. So I d decide to get into everything but the stone shaper that's by the wold weird and Kruger, of course. And then I think the boil master. I get the pot, though. And uh, we ended up having to look up some rules on how the uh, the structure works with her feet, and I believe we had figured out that it shuts it down. Yeah, because it has no male or it has no movement, so it has to sack combat action. So her feet and like things like stranglehold just literally shut down a structure for a turn. Yeah, so I was um, happy that I at least remembered a feet. And this is like one of those things where I think a lot of Haley Two players would be like. Well, Brian, you dumb dumb, you should have been playing her a little more far forward and then feed it on turn two to make sure that you could do this big attrition play later. But, you know, like even waiting just a little bit, you know, not that I waited on purpose, but um, waiting now just means that I'm able to do all the things that I want to do still. And with Ethan's army being smaller now, uh, it's a lot more effective, I feel like, at this point. So the Ironclad, unfortunately, doesn't come up with enough to kill the the Wold Warden, I think we rolled pretty under average for a lot I of those did damage rolls. The charge that time. That one you hermited, yep. But we're still in a pretty decent place here. We score two points, three points now? Two. My, two. my zone, a flag, and that's that. And then you score one, so we're two to two. Yeah, Haley's feet sucks, so I just gotta kind of work through it. Uh, I know I can at least get the Ironclad because he punched me. I'm a TK caster. I can just TK myself around and punch some stuff. And I'm like, I need to take Thorn, and I need to finally kill that stupid Minutemen. But then I was like, well, 
I don't really got much to kill it because the stupid well can't shoot. Well, and that Minuteman did a pretty decent chunk of work into that world weird by just aiming and shooting too last turn. Yep. I think uh, we half helped it. Because I did not get Windstorm up again. Mm-hmm. Because I needed the gallows to clear the flag, which didn't actually matter because I missed the TK on the Minuteman. Yeah, too much work to do. Because so, the Minuteman is 15-14, or 14-15. He's ridiculously defensive for a light check. So I repair with the Stone Shaper that was not feeded on. I believe I'm going to give plus two strength to the other one. Kruger's checking if he could charge, and I'm like... I gave Doug out to Kruger every turn because I was worried about Haley just trivially coming up and TKing me and then like spelling me to death or getting like Dreyfus on me or something stupid from downtown. Uh, so Dogwood's going up, Pop Master and Kruger because I'm like, I'm going to try and reel in Thorn this turn and then hopefully kill it. Uh, there I'm checking to make sure I'm within three inches. I give myself plus two strength with the other Stone Shaper that was feeded on and sacked its movement. And then I'm like, okay, I think with Vet Leader and Puppet Master, I can kill this thing. So, or actually, no, I don't give it Puppet Master. So, I'm just kind of going through, double checking, th like trying to check every single activation I can do because I need to, this turn to go well. So, I do the TK. T I have the Warden TK itself. Because I'm overestimating how much work it can do. I hit. And then... Oh, Brian stepped away for a little bit while I was doing all this. Now I'm just basically explaining everything I've done while he was gone. And now I'm doing the to hit with the plus two strength. It's dice damage. Wasn't a great roll. I think you puppet mastered that one though, didn't you? The, I did not puppet master that heavy. Because I thought he could kill it without it. And I... I thought the pot was in position, like, I wanted to save the pot so I could reel in Thorn with a second Gallows from him, but then I didn't realize, like, well, since I can't move, I'm not going to get line of sight. So I left it on six boxes, so maybe one Puppet Master in there might have, I don't think one Puppet Master would have got me six extra damage, but the pot could throw its spell into melee. Well, but, and, and the other thing you've done here, too, is with the way your wardens are positioned, uh, Scythe can't see shit. No. Scythe is stuck back there, feed it on, so she can't shoot anything. And because she's stuck behind the pot, behind the wardens. So I'm like, okay, I wanted this warden to be the one to hopefully kill Thorn, but I need to kill this ironclad. Because I think I haven't. I just took out its movement, its cortex, and its hammer are still up. Yep, he's got that one whole side still up and at him. Real dangerous still. So now I puppet master with the pot. Because I'm like, well, the pot can't do anything else because it's feeding on. So I puppet master this warden. It TKs itself around. I punch at dice minus two. And I believe I killed it with my first swing. So I can't do anything with Thorn since I TK'd myself around. Kruger moves up, goes for a Gallows, because I'm out of TK range, so I had, here I'm debating boosting to hit, because I did drop Rebuke, and I'm like, okay, I just need a 7, a Pump Master 7, I hit it, I pull him 3 inches. Yeah, I believe that's the way that worked out. Yep. So, and now I'm TKing him. So if I had done this first, I could have gotten melee, because I didn't go all the way forward with that World Warden, so I could have got the Warden on Thorn. And now I believe I'm lamenting all the activations I have left, which is basically the weird, because nothing else matters. And I think we're trying to figure out if I even... if I just auto-lose. Yeah, I think you're at the point where you're like, I think I just lose this game now. Yeah. Because I... And, and not because you're out of options, you're doing the scenario math. Yeah, I'm doing the scenario math. Brian's, we're tied right now. You're going to auto-score your zone in the flag to go up two more. Or go up two. I'll yeah, go up I'd one. Go, yeah, I'd go up four. I'd go up to four. You'll go up to three. And then at the end of the other turn, I'd go up to six. If I can test your zone, I just need one more point. Yeah. So Weird goes, shoots Thorn in the back, boosts some shots, because he's not in melee. I boost damage. And I leave him on one box in his cor in his cortex. I miss the third shot, and he dodges the turnaround. And then 
Hermit's just sacking action and walking forward to be annoying. Scythe just kind of went off to the side. And then here's, I think, where we're talking about scenario. So I sat here at this turn and debated, like, maybe I can try and just put Thorn onto Kruger and see if that's cool, you know, like, do something cute. And then uh, I promptly realize uh, at Ethan's reminder that uh, Thorn is, is jacked up. And I mean, not like, he, he's he's messed up. He's he's uh, he's hurting pretty bad. So uh, I think uh, I'm still working through that right now. And... Uh, Ultimately, I'm just like, nope, I'm, I, I allocated to him anyways because I was like, yeah, I might try it. And then I run the journeyman up to the flag, so that's going to score it since no one is within four inches of it. Um, and then at this point, I'm just like, well, instead of going in and, and messing with Kruger, I'm just going to go ahead and move Thorn up. And because uh, even here, I like temporal accelerated him like I was going nutty. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. That's dumb, Brian. So uh, I, I think at this point, we just end up having Haley move up and then TK uh, Thorn to get out of the out of melee with the Warden. And then that puts him in the zone, and I put Nemo in the zone since Haley left it to score the zone. And then that closes out the scenario for a victory for Haley. So I think that ends up being, uh, uh, what was it, 8-3, to three, something like that? Uh, we might have done the math wrong now that I'm thinking about it. Because uh, like, now you're contesting. I scored my zone bottom of one, or bottom of two, top of three. Which was your turn because yeah, you didn't so contest. You would have, you'd have two points I'd by now. I'd have three. I'd have three because I scored at bottom of two. And I scored at top of three because you didn't get anything in my zone. And then I scored it again on my bottom of three just now under your feet. So, like, I think we thought I was at two because I think you did just go to eight. Yeah, I, I think there's there not to not to be like, oh, well, things wouldn't have changed a whole lot because I think I still have plenty of juice in the tank to be able to get onto your objective to try and carve that out between Nemo and Haley doing some work. So I don't think that there it would have been all too difficult for me to close out that extra point. Oh, Benny. Uh, it might have been because I have electric immune on my objective. But the oh, big yeah. thing is, like, I shouldn't have actually been able to contest your zone turn two at the Death Archon. With the flicker because you didn't. So it, it yeah. balances out. Like, the you fact, couldn't have like, contested and then I shouldn't. Then I didn't. I was down one point, but you were. You, the I would have the had problem is that top thing. Like that top leg is yours. Like I can't score it. Yeah, you've got nothing other than Scythe running around next turn, and as soon as she comes out, she dies. Yeah, like she might get lucky, and with she has Hunter, so she ignores the wall and roadblock, so she might kill you off the flag. Mm -hmm. But that's a big if. And the fact that like I lost my Death Archons to trivial attacks, like the first. They just took so much damage they shouldn't have. Like, that bottom one took half... It was down to six boxes from the slug guns that shouldn't have been able to shoot, but I missed two fucking rebukes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get up Windstorm. Otherwise, like, I don't care about the Minutemen because it can never shoot all game because yeah. Windstorm makes its guns neg one. Well, and Savio, between Savio and uh, the shots that went in on that Death Archon, like, just... Or the, the Hammersmith... Um, the Savio repost kill was just like ridiculously fortuitous for me because it was just one less thing I had to do on my turn with a solo that does a lot of work. Yep, you were able to kill it out of activation before you even feed it. So now it's like, because my plan was to score that top flag before you feed, and then we got ourselves a game because I knew you have repost. I was like, okay, Death Harkon. I didn't even say it out loud because I didn't want to jinx it. I was like, you just need <laughs> a stupid Annihilator 8. Like, you can do this. And then I rolled a 6 1 1, and I was like, I'm dead. Yep. Savio is Matt 8, and he just. Matt 9. Matt 9, of course. And, like, he was dice minus 2 Weapon Master on an 8 box dude. I'm like, if you hit me, you'll kill me pretty much on average. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty well. And then well you overkilled him. Yeah, by a lot. To the fact where you might have killed him, like, if he had 5 more boxes, even. Mm -hmm. I could have like, killed him. Maybe could have killed him from full. Maybe. Mm -hmm. You didn't spike that hard. Yeah. At any rate, um, this is just more of the same thing that at least I know both of us have probably been saying since we've started playing Haley 2 on the channel, is that as Privateer Press has released more powerhouse solos that do way, way more than what they really should, I mean, we're looking at models that have like two to three cards worth of rules on them sometimes, and maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but I don't really think it is. Um, 
there's a lot of points being packed into small packages that kind of make the lists a little bit more thin. And when that kind of stuff happens, that's where Haley really likes to play because she doesn't just like shut down whole armies like she used to anymore. But now she has to roll for those uh, for those things. And you know, even if I would have rolled a one on this with the with just hitting six models from Ethan's army, those were still all six models that would be doing work that he wouldn't be able to get much of anything done next turn. Like if you were in a TK caster, you would have been so just ineffectual on on your turn after my feet oh yeah i've played non-tk casters in the haley and it's just a nightmare so yeah. when you asked to have at least a list uh, like give her a good game i was like it has to be kruger mm-hmm. like i couldn't think of any other list i was building at the time for my factions that could actually like stand up to her and give her like a, f- a fairish game without being one-sided like kruger bones would have been better overall because like i couldn't protect uh, like Kogan, I don't know. Kogan was out of my command, but like Gudrun, you couldn't. You shot the Death Archons. Yeah. So like, it's just like I couldn't protect Melvin and Mayhem. Like there was nowhere he could have went on that top side where I could have stayed out of your threat and been relevant. Well, yeah, that's the thing is you're either gonna get hit by the Dominate, or you're gonna get hit by the Storm, the Storm Gun, or the hammersmith is going to get you which you know if, if you're a person who is playing signar in your meta and having a lot of problems dealing with malvin and mayhem like Haley too just kind of gets him coming and going there's no way you can stay safe from him as long as you've got uh thorn and a couple other tools at your disposal like nemo 4 is a really big part of that because he can just shoot something so far forward up the table that hits so insanely hard that malvin and mayhem just turn to dust under their attacks oh yeah like you're probably going to be dice damage or maybe dice minus one if you're only got a pow 17 with the boost up to pow 19 if he mm-hmm. does the shields there i had to do flight to get around the building i was debating going to the side of it but i was like if i go to the side of this building and Haley feats next turn melvin's out of the game like you're just gonna position your heavy over towards that flag so you can see me and then like melvin's gotta just dirtle around for a turn and then get punched turn three yep so i needed to be aggressive to try and maybe it's a bad point swing, but like bait out your heavy so Hulk Hogan could come in or like a Death Archon could clean up. And like the top side of the table could have like would have bounced back if I rolled a that one extra one to hit Dreyfus. Or um, not Dreyfus, Acosta. hit Acosta because he's only armor what, 14, 15? 15, I believe, and so, then up to 17 with Unyielding because he's Storm Knight now. Yep, so I did need an Annihilator 7 to kill him because he's, or has he got eight boxes? Uh, he, I think he's a five box guy. Yeah, he's a fiver. Because even Hulk Hogan's only five. But yeah, regardless, like, Haley, with this list, like, even the Stormlances, they were 20 points of something that did almost nothing outside of, like, you know, YOLOing a, or yeeting a, a Death Archon off the table when they really shouldn't have. Um, but even playing essentially 20 points down with rebuke hitting me, um, Haley still had so many tools to be able to do what she needed to do here. And there wasn't a single thing that you ended up presenting to me that caused me enough of a problem to say, I don't know how to respond to this. No, I think you winning the role was huge. Oh yeah. Like if I could go first, set the line of engagement. Now Haley's got to think like, do I feet defensively bottom of one? Yeah, and that's where the Haley player, like you, the first three points you spend outside of Thorn is on Anastasia because use, getting f- turn one gives you so much leverage in the game that trying to feat offensively as Haley is where you need to be. Um, let not need to be. You can feat defensively and still win the game, but like feeding offensively is just insult to injury. She becomes so difficult to deal with, especially on a scenario like this. Like if you feat top of two. There is little to no chance of me getting to your rectangle. They did take the flag off the middle, luckily, thank God. So the scenario isn't as live, but generally, like, it's not hard for her to contest your zone with just a random storm lance. And then all of a sudden, she's scoring on your turn yep. under her feet. And that is not good. If yep. she starts to snowball, like, I didn't feed this game. I pro like we realized afterwards, like I was just in range to catch uh, Dreyfus and knock him off the flag, but like with that with that side being so collapsed, there really wasn't much of a comeback besides me hail marrying Haley off the field, but she was taking dugout every turn. 
Yeah, yeah. I made sure that Haley was connected to that one. I think there was some value to maybe taking the Pathfinder objective, but seeing the things play out the way that they did after the game happened, I was like, nah, when you're playing against a TK caster, it's probably just best to just like windmill slam dugout on there so that you can make sure that your opponent doesn't get a chance to take your caster off the table just for nothing. Yeah, originally you were like, I'm taking Pathfinder. I was like, are you sure? Yeah. Like, yeah, you convinced me. If I play Kruger, like my opponent's always taking dugout because they're like, well, now my heavier caster is immune to your feet and TK, yep. so you can't just push me around. Because usually what happens on this scenario, or used to, something in the middle, gets, like a heavy gets a dugout, it buries itself deep under Haley's feet in my zone, and then I can't just TK it out, yep. and now i got to kill it. And depending on where the heavies are, like if I'm not within five inches for, or no, three because i can't tk you or gallows you it's just it gets rough yeah dugout's a really big uh tool against uh against those tk casters so if you're and now it's on every on scenario. every scenario yep but it doesn't mean that tk casters are bad per se it just means they can't just like you know whiff your caster out of nowhere yeah no it gives you extra protection and it's just like the double protection against kruger's feet because there wasn't really an opportunity for me to feet and like apply scenario so like i don't know like kruger is still like good it's kruger yeah it's just like your control feet was better than my control feet my control feet's better than yours and my individual pieces have a little bit more reach out and touch you and ability to spread out a lot more like i have the gallows and the tk threats but like you don't need to hit me with spells to get plus seven inches on your heavy. Exactly, where like yeah. I need good gallows rolls. Yeah, you have to and apply that. And my stuff and TKing you, mm-hmm. where like you just pick a heavy and you're like, yeet, and it goes across the table and it's it's moving usually what fourteen inches. Yeah, I mean like the the hammersmith in this list. So like I typically will put a Toro onto Nemo for because he just threats so much further and is a little bit more chunky. But um, with a Hammersmith, your speed four, you charge seven with a one inch reach. So your eight inch threat base and then TK to 10, locomotion to uh, to 13 and then temporal acceleration to 15. And then if you TK your opponent's model, it's 17. Yeah. And if that opponent's model happens to be a Warjack, you just dominate it instead. And then it's whatever their movement is. Can you... Yeah, dominates four, TA is four? I don't think three. you can... So if you kick the squire, TA is three, dominates four, and then you kick the squire so you can get a TK, I guess. So yeah. you'd lose a TK. Yeah. But dominate... As long as you're dominating something that's more than speed two, you're getting... Exactly, yeah. And it's turned around. Mm-hmm. And you get to punch something. That's just, uh, you know, like I like I said, the, the I, with Nemo 4, I think he's really like one of the things that really brought Haley to the point where she's like abusive again and she's the 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 meta changing around her did a lot for her but i think nemo 4 really does kind of crank her up a lot oh yeah so like like, he's everything she wants yeah if you're a signar player that's just not understanding why Haley 2 is really great right now like just throw that big old toilet bowl of nemo on the table and just like you'll it'll come to you i'm a floating orb like i even put probably the slowest jack that uh, Signar has at their disposal onto Nemo for, and he still just rockets across the table and does a ton of freaking work. Like we didn't even get a chance to see the Hammersmith really do what he likes to do, which is just like punch, punch, smite, follow up, beat back, and get you off my property. Yep. And then you got Nemo thunderbolting stuff, which yep. is even more a pain in the ass on Haley's feet. Mm-hmm. Like, which is another reason why Kruger was like poised well into that, just because you shut down a lot of his shooting. You can still thunderbolt something that's electric immune. Okay. Well, I mean, you're still shooting, shutting down his pow 14s. So. Yeah, but say like that turn where I TK'd myself around to punch you. Yeah, you could. T- I was yeah, exactly could. within three. If you had thunderbolted him once. Yeah. I would not have been able to punch your heavy. Lots of crazy stuff with this list. I just, you know, I'm I'm not a. Uh, Signar is not my favorite faction in the universe to play. It's just it, it, it just isn't. It hasn't stuck to my ribs. But this Haley two list is what makes me want to play Signar a little bit more. Like there's still fun stuff that they've got at their disposal, but um Haley two is just like she's maybe not Mark two Haley two good, but man is she really powerful. It's right hard now. to hit that level of absurdity because like she mm-hmm. was she's she bonkers. was one of the highest negative play experiences in the game when she just. I think people forget she used to pick the fucking order of activations yeah. on top of everything else. And it was just like, 
why do we even play? Yeah, it was rough. I think at at one point in the Madison area, it got to the got to the got to the point where uh, some Signar players just stopped playing her because they felt bad. But then they'd lose one game with uh, like Cray or Darius, and then be like, "No, I'm gonna bring Haley to again." And it's like, okay, I had my fun with Striker. It's yeah. time to go back. Time to go back. At least they weren't playing Haley one. Yeah. Well, back then she was a very different caster. But anyways, she's down one Warjack point now, so she's very balanced. I mean, the whole temporal thing is also fine. No, that's the fine. fact that you can actually charge and run. Yeah, I know, right? In her 16-inch control You only, you only can hit Kator heavies with that thing and actually make it functional. But that's just talking about Haley 1, which I don't know if that's that's more toilet bowling. And I, I don't know. I know it's been a long time since we've done a battle report between the two of us, but I don't know if it's been long enough to where like the toilet bowling would be welcome again I, you know like we, we we've already kind of basically toilet bowled a little bit into like how amazing the vindicator is and how you think that he's not you're the, the one that's amazing toilet bowled, like out of nowhere you're like you know what <laughs> i debated with somebody about the best jack in the game hey no we were talking about something that was oh, uh man. related to war jacks you brought up it was Nolamite. war machine you brought up playing a game against somebody else because you play other people more than me now uh i don't remember you people who are watching by now i forgot what i said so you're gonna have to go back and confirm that ethan brought up the vindicator I didn't bring not up shit because <laughs> i still think yeah i actually agree that vindicator just nudges out the manticore because of its ammo types but manticore is so the fucking good ammo types man and then speed five with a reach weapon at pal freaking 18 like i shoot i dunk your heavies in combat like he's just gross oh you're a construct decrepitation oh you happen to be living bam neg two armor yeah. Oh, and on, on, by the way, I have powerful shot as well. So you don't need to allocate anything to me for me to do my work. And Man if you're playing in Prime Materia, you just throw one focus on me and I'm fully loaded. Woo. Manticore is just a very good beat stick <laughs> with covering fire. Like, <laughs> it makes itself immune to most single wound infantry. Oh, did I tell you that if you aim with the Vindicator, he basically just gets snipe? Yeah. With mm. steam pressure? It's real good. Real, real good. Yeah, did I tell you four Manticores basically shuts down <laughs> strange bedfellows? Yeah. Well, no one plays and that Doom crappy Reavers. list anymore anyways. The uh, Death Archon came out, so no one plays those. I did actually want to play my five Manticore Helena list. Yeah. Oh, all the covering fires, all the tridents. We'll just have to make that make sure that's the next one. So um, before we get too far deep into the, our, our weird wish list jank tanks, uh, we will sign off for this one. Oh, we're uh, not going to talk about Barney Zero? No, we're not going to talk about Barney Zero. That's, that's, for, <laughs> that's for our second third podcast that will threaten people with that will never post because craig bot sucks yeah well maybe i'll just proxy him one of these times because i think he's i almost amazing. thought about doing it and saying you know what i'm not gonna play this Haley two list i'm just gonna play like uh you know i want i was like i'm gonna play maylock blindwater and just i was actually this. gonna play maylock blindwater <laughs> and i was thinking about it and so you're like i want Haley, and i was like oh fine yeah, we'll, we'll do that next time. It, we're calling it now. One of us is playing Maylock Blindwater next time we play. I just want my armor 30 fucking Barnabas. Yep. Because that is a trivial thing he does. And then I'll just, uh, I'll bring something with like Dark Seduction and then be like, okay, now he's like five inches back that way and punching your warlock. Oh, it's Princess Regna. Just go away. <laughs> or I bring a Okay, you, you heard it here first, people. Minions into Infernals. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs>